uh, we will uh, continue with the last talk of the uh, of the week. So Shin Shin Ho will uh, Shin Ho Choi will be talking um, about how to fault tolerantly realize any quantum circuit with local operation. Uh, to, yeah. Thank you for introduction and thank you for coming to one of the last talks of this conference. Uh, today I want to um, show our result on realizing any quantum circuits with, uh, in local gates. Um, I, I'm going to use similar terminologies from uh, the last talk. So the number of qubits uh, in the quantum circuit will be uh, called width or space. And the number of layers of the circuits would be called depth. Um, and here, uh, I'm assuming I can uh, reuse the qubits, which is measured. And uh, it doesn't really increase, increase the width. Uh, and I'm considering a noise model, which is called local stochastic or locally decaying noise, uh, which is simply uh, putting uh, poly errors uh, between every layers. And uh, the probability that uh, a subset of uh, qubits is included in the uh, support of the poly should be uh, exponentially decaying in the size of the subset. And the parameter here, P, is called noise rate or noise strength. Um, and one of the important um, uh, theorem uh, in fault tolerant quantum computing is I think uh, this threshold th theorem, uh, which is uh, the following. So uh, given any quantum circuit Q, you want to construct uh, a fault tolerant quantum circuit Q prime in the sense that um, given any target accuracy epsilon, um, your output circuit Q prime with noise uh, with a strength below a threshold should be epsilon close to your uh, input circuit in terms of the total variation of the output uh, stream. And in this setup, uh, you can ask questions uh, like uh, space overhead or depth or time overhead, which is the ratio of um, input and output circuits. And you um, and there are some uh, known uh, fault torrent quantum computation scheme, uh, which was also introduced in the previous, uh, previous talk. Uh, I listed some of them. And um, you can see uh, the, the table of space overhead and depth overhead. Um, and I didn't notice that. Uh, Recently, there was improvement with the quantum LEPC code with concentrate. Uh, it was mentioned uh, in the last talk that uh, depth overhead has uh, decreased to polylog uh, by Tamiya and other people. Uh, in this talk, uh, I also care about locality of the quantum circuits. So simply, um, Locality means like you put your qubits in 1D or 2D or 3D lattices, and all the two qubit gates are uh, acting on uh, lo uh, local pairs of qubits. Then you can consider a fault tolerance scheme, which takes input circuit and outputs local fault tolerant uh, circuit. And you can uh, think, think about how to, how to construct these schemes based on fault tolerant quantum computation scheme. Um, so for example, you can think about swap gates 
to to simulate long range gait between uh, between four pair of qubits, or you can think about uh, generating uh, EPR pairs between uh, those four qubits, and then try to gate teleport or qubit teleport uh, to simulate long range gates. So um, yesterday, um, there were two nice talks uh, by Chris and Noah. So um, in this hierarchical memory paper, they consider swap gates uh, and, and uh, the paper by Noah and other people, they, they uh, constructed bell pair to, to do gate teleportation. Um, and our work also generate bell pairs. Uh, but uh, our, our scheme uh, can be applied um, even for quantum, uh, quantum computing, not only for uh, uh, syndrome extraction. And you can also talk about uh, overheads. And um, as we discussed uh, yesterday, there, there is uh, for, for a good quantum LDPC code or concentrate LDPC codes, uh, there is a trade-off relationship between uh, space overhead and depth overhead. So if you, if you minimize one of the overhead, then you certainly has to have a certain amount of the other overhead. So uh, yesterday's talk, uh, try to minimize the uh, space overhead. Uh, compared to that, those works, uh, in our work, we, we try to minimize the depth overhead while uh, increasing the, the space overhead. And you can, we can also talk about uh, the dimension and um, yesterday's talks, uh, we're talking about 2D architecture. While uh, we, we constructed quasi 2D, meaning um, we, we stack up uh, logarithmically many uh, planar sheets. And we also came up with a 3D architecture. So our contribution is the following. Um, so we constructed fault tolerant routing scheme in quasi 2D and 3D lattices. And the idea is uh, you can choose any fault tolerant uh, quantum computing scheme and you can combine it with our routing scheme to, to construct local fault tolerant quantum computation scheme. Um, let me briefly talk about routing. So routing is nothing but uh, a given, given one layer of the circuits. Uh, for example, here, uh, red gate is applied to qubit one and qubit six, and blue gate is applied to qubit three and qubit 14. Uh, and I colored uh, qubits so that uh, colors indicate uh, the gate that I want to apply in this 2D lattice. Uh, for, for long range gates, um, if I have EPR pairs connecting those two qubits, then I can just teleport qubits or instead using te gate teleportation to simulate uh, each layer of the circuit. And then you can simply repeat this uh, for, for the entire uh, in for the entire layer of the input circuit. Um, more in detail, uh, we can say um, in this way. So given Q prime, uh, you construct Q prime local with the following properties. If you, if your Q prime local is under uh, local stochastic noise uh, with strength below some threshold, then 
uh, that circuit is equivalent to noisy implementation, some noisy implementation of the input quantum circuit Q prime. And here, uh, the noise would be uh, here C times Q two C, which is worse than uh, worse than Q. But uh, but here. Uh, it, it, it can be written as polynomial in Q. And we obtain the following, uh, following overheads for uh, depth and space. So um, for this routing, our depth overhead is constant while our space overhead is the following polynomial. Um, so, it, it is n prime times some polylog term in quasi 2D lattice. Uh, and uh, for 3D lattice, we had square root of n prime times some polylog. Yeah, as I said, uh, we, we com combine this with uh, some existing fault tolerant quantum computing scheme. So that uh, given input circuit Q, in the end, we come up with Q prime local, which is local circuit. Combining these two, we, we get another threshold theorem for local fault tolerant quantum computation scheme. Uh, for, for for computing uh, overheads for the entire uh, fault to local fault tolerant quantum computing scheme, you can simply multiply the overhead of the given uh, fault tolerant scheme and our routing scheme. That's a very elementary uh, calculation. And let's let me talk about more details about uh, routings. Uh, our routing is um, nothing. Um, uh, for routing, let's first consider non-fault tolerant version. Then simply you can think about entanglement uh, swapping. So here um, you start with all zero state. And for each neighborhood in this 1D chain, you apply entangling gates uh, and you take bell measurement, which can also be written as entangling gates and single grid measurement. And then after that, you take parity function on the output uh, measurement output. And according to the parity, you apply some poly correction. So you can end up, end up with a desired bell basis. And the idea of um, 3D uh, routing in 3D lattice is the following. So, um, so you fill up your lattice with auxiliary qubits. And then using a greedy algorithm, you, you find a edge disjoint path in the lattice and then you can run parallel. You can run parallelly uh, the entanglement swapping to generate uh, EPR pairs uh, simultaneously. And since uh, entanglement swapping was constant depth, and you can you can parallelize it because all path was uh, edge disjoint. So the overall uh, depth overhead should be const constant. And we, we, we showed that uh, with simple greedy algorithm, you can, you can pack all of the paths in L by L by four L lattice, where L is scaling as square root of N prime. And we uh, noticed that uh, this uh, this kind of routing was extensively studied in 
many lattice surgery literatures uh, with many optimization techniques. But in our paper, for the proof of threshold theorem, we only use a very simple greedy algorithm for, for our purpose. And what about the fault tolerant routing? So basic idea is we take the idea from uh, measurement based quantum computing and there they first create a, a very big uh, graph state and then uh, they measure all the qubits except for uh, two qubits which are taking the corners of the, this cluster. And then according to the measurement result, you again uh, compute some poly correction and apply it to one of the uh, remaining qubits. And then it will give you uh, an EPR pair. And surprisingly, this procedure is also uh, noise resilient with constant threshold. Uh, and we, we extended this result uh, by showing that it also works even if you have multiple, uh, multiple cluster states. Uh, and uh, we, we proved that uh, it works with local stochastic noise, which allows some amount of correlations. And here we, we emphasize that this theorem doesn't really depend on, uh, on K, which is the number of clusters. Um, so that's why we can use this theorem for our parallel uh, routing. And simply, uh, we just replace all the path with our clusters or bus. But we have to thicken a little bit because uh, the, the cluster has to have linear uh, size with cross-section uh, scaling in log R, where log R is the uh, range of the entanglement. And then you can pack your buses into the lattice, and that will be your final routing scheme. As a conclusion, um, we, we are proposing a scheme for uh, realizing fault-tolerant local circuit based on fault-tolerant quantum computation scheme without considering locality. And we rigorously pr prove threshold theorem for circuit level noise. And uh, for, for, for that proof, we, we came up with parallel repetition theorem for uh, generating bell pairs uh, in. And for discussion, um, so we can talk about um, optimality of uh, minimal, optimality of space and depth overheads. And I'm afraid our space overhead is too big because now uh, space is more valuable compared to time, I think, because qubit is very expensive. But uh, I hope in the future that qubit became so cheap so that uh, people care more about uh, depth of the computation. Thank you. So I'll ask one. Um, you're saying the polynomial overhead is too big, and you also say it's optimal. Oh yeah, uh, but yeah. And what is your question? Um, what do you think we can do about about it? Oh, uh, like um, in old literatures, talking about concatenated codes, or even in the first 
given in the paper by Aharonov and Benno, which proves the threshold theorem for the first time. They mention how those can be uh, localized and they have very small, like only po polylogarithmic overhead for, for local architecture. But, uh, but here, what I'm saying is for localizing LDPC code, there's trade-off. You cannot minimize space and time sim simultaneously. So <laughs> it's a bit like for, for computation, maybe, uh, maybe time is important, but uh, in the previous talks, they were talking about syndrome extraction circuits. And if you can prove syndrome extraction circuit with local gates as threshold, even if they have long depth, then it's fine. You can just construct it and say, uh, you, you need to wait a little bit to, to obtain all the syndromes, but if it works, it's fine. So yeah, my point is for memory, I think increasing depth is fine, but maybe, maybe for computation, it is not very good. Then you can try to minimize the depth, but then you have space overhead. I see, thanks. Okay, I have a related question. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's say like I can make as many physical qubits as I want for free, like I don't care about the space cost at all. Um, and then I'm going to compare, like say doing what you do. So I have some like non-embeddable, but like in 2D, like a some finite rate LDPC code. And then I'm using this third, like big third dimension to make it all local, right? And then I want to compare this to just doing like surface code computation and I can use my whole 3D architecture so I can stack them all up in 3D and I can do like um, transversal C0 gates between them and things like this. What kind of regimes do you think uh, we have to go to before your approach, like using like non-local codes and making them local would outcompete just using this 3D architecture to do surface code computation? Yeah, I think that's a very good question we have to think about like um, but my 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 thinking is like for surface code many people try to really optimize the the overheads but uh, for LDPC code maybe you still have some room so I cannot really con say concrete answer to your question but um, yeah okay thanks we yeah. have a question uh, so, like, uh, in your construction, is there any possibility to reduce the space overhead more by increasing the time overhead? Like, uh, for instance, sequentially using some qubits. Do you think polynomial over space overhead is inevitable in your approach, or can you still uh, decrease the okay. uh, space overhead a bit and then you can increase the time overhead? So, yeah, I was, so, um, so the yesterday's talks were like minimizing space, but increased depth, our was the other way. Mm -hmm. And you can think about somewhere in the middle, right. like you want to afford more qubits maybe, then maybe, yeah, like, but there's no paper yet, like uh, about this intermediate regime. Okay, but so I think you can, you can think about it, yeah. So you don't know whether they could do some social theory kind of thing in this kind I of thing. I think, I think you ca I can use, the same technique. So I was thinking about that by by shrinking the height, actually, mm -hmm. but still, but then you have to make sure that for waiting time using the bus, mm -hmm. you have to protect somehow your qubits. So this, I think similar to hierarchical code, you need extra mm -hmm. like surface code or like your concatenated code, like, you need some base or underlying code maybe to, to protect this additional noise caused by waiting for bus. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, uh, thanks for the very nice talk. And I, I have questions like, I think Gaussman has a, a paper maybe in uh, 1999 about like using local gates to for torrent quantum computing. So can you remind me like what is the difference between you like your work between the oh. previous work? So uh, in that paper, they uh, he he suggested using swap gates, and it was sufficient for him uh, to minimize um, the the sequence of swap gates, and it doesn't really blow up like our case. Uh, so we 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 remained so we were in the regime of small depth overhead but large space overhead. But uh, in this old paper, um, he could show with concatenation, uh, space overhead and depth overhead can be both small as polynomial, a uh, polylog. Okay, uh, so can I understand your work like you introduce more space overhead and you can get uh, actually a higher threshold for this for competition? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I understand your thing correctly, but um, that technique in Gottesman's work that cannot be applied to LDPC codes. You, you certainly need certain amount of swap gates for uh, constant rate good LDPC code because of the expansion property. So either you have to spend more qubits or uh, spend more depth. To, to simulate local gates. Oh, okay, I think I understand, thanks. And then thank you for the very nice talk and let's thank our speaker again. And this brings us to the end of the last session.